For me, I did a fortunate life, a science background. Mm. I know this book will not lift itself without yeah. energy. Yeah. It will never happen. But here are witches flying a number of them on a winnowing basket, yeah. no, not a broom like whites do. <laughs> then I say, why don't our universities investigate that energy? <laughs> they are busy condemning it's witchcraft. Then I said, okay, you remove the witch and remain with the craft Crafts. to study it. <laughs> our gift is spirituality. You can hit a fellow now who is in Britain. And we have always been wireless. They are discovering this wireless recently. It's something new in the Western world. But we have always been doing it. And I've always said, when it is Joseph dreaming in Egypt for the pharaohs, and it's written in the Bible, oh, it's hallelujah chorus. They love that. <laughs> but when it's me, What do you think is the problem of Africa? The problem of Africa is going beyond mental colonization. Because it's all mental. You have to be. It's easy to get a gun, fire the white man, and he runs away. But as he runs away, he remains in your mind. So have you chased him? You have not. He's still there. You need to read, to cleanse the mind. And that's the process I term liberation. There hasn't been a liberation in Africa. The liberation of the mindset. Of the mind. That you see yourself as someone not inferior to another race. No. Problem is, some of these young fellows are not reading enough to discover African discoveries, the things that we started, the science that we had in Africa. They don't see it. They think it's all new. In African culture, they can't see the science that is there. That's the problem. There's a lot of it. Everything, but people will accept that Africa is the cradle of humanity. So if it is, everything started here. The problem is, Africans are quarreling. Some are proudly Lusophone, proudly Anglophone, proudly Francophone. All these are useless things. You, 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 these are useless things. You need to be an African. I see when my favorite people in that part of the world where you come from are the Dogon. I like their philosophy. Where they have the Dog Star, for example, the Dog Star has a 60 uh, year cycle. And they know it, there is a priest dedicated to see the time when the Dog Star will come. And they saw it ahead of NASA. But Africa doesn't know these proud stories of their ancients to derive pride and it becomes a source of motivation. But if you don't know these, you think it's all that there is in Africa is uh, demonism, things to be denigrated, despised. That's what Africa is used to, good for nothing. And so you allow people to come and dictate the form of government, the form of religion, everything which is not even African. You see, that, that's the problem. There will come a time, it's not going to be immediate, but I can assure you it's coming, and that revolution will be led by people who are spiritual. Not these people who, 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 who do not have some spiritual drive in them. Because the people who suffered are the ancients. The way they relate to us now is through spirituality. They still communicate with us. If I tell you the chevron design. What are these triangles that we see, or should I even call them triangles? Yes, you are right to call them triangles um, because these are symbolic, they are representative, but we need right from the outset to establish exactly what we mean. Okay. And for that, I will stand up so that I demonstrate. Okay. Now, what you are calling a triangle actually is this part. Okay. 
not just part of a man. Yes, a man also has it, but it's essentially that part of a woman. Okay. Right. So uh, either you can perceive it as a triangle mm -hmm. or as an open V mm -hmm. like this. It's the same. You can have that line making it a triangle, mm -hmm. isosceles triangle, or it is an open V. Right. But that we are going to call that triangle is a chevron icon one. Okay. Chevron icon or chevron symbol. Mm. You are going to find it everywhere in Africa. Yeah. I remember we had a cultural conference in uh, Algiers some years back. Then I was moving from country to country asking what does chevron mean? The fellows had no clue at all. And my ancestors had told me. The very ancestors, if you mention ancestors, you are then seen to be very primitive, very demonic. Why? Why dream? Because ancestors communicate us to us, with us through dreams. And I've always said, when it is Joseph dreaming in Egypt for the pharaohs, and it's written in the Bible, oh, it's hallelujah chorus. They love that. <laughs> but when it's me, it's demons. Then I say, but uh, if your grandfather was a demon, you are a demon too. It's as simple as that. A frog begets a frog. A lizard begets a lizard. So if you say we are demons, our ancestors are demons, and they beget us, so we are demons. You can see that. These are Africans heavily brainwashed. That's the tragedy of Africa. What is your view on Pan-Africanism? Pan-Africanism has to be clarified. Hmm. If you push the political agenda and end there, you go nowhere. It is not politics that ought to be uniting us. We are united even before politics. It is Pan-African view of the world. I, 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 I am, so we are. That togetherness, that spirit of being together. Uh, I think somebody sent to me some few sayings which I thought sound great to me. On alone, I smile. Together, we laugh. I said, that sounds great. Alone, I say. Together, we talk. Alone, I enjoy. Together, we celebrate. There were three. I said, that's African. That's what Pan-African, not a shared blackness, a shared residence on the same continent means nothing. That means nothing. But how we are a people who are conservation conscious. But today they will tell you, I, 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 I doing this. No, 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 no. We are conservation uh, conscious because of our spirituality. Our spirituality says we are related to trees, we are related to all animals, and we thrive on them. Our sustenance is guaranteed by the environment and environment with the plants. So water becomes critical, rain becomes critical, and we have dances that uh, uh, sort of induce rains to fall. Without rain, if for five years, five consecutive years, there's no rain, this, there will be no life. It's as simple as all that. It's as simple as five years, no rains. Mother Earth is the source of sustenance. Our own mothers must be breastfed by this Mother Earth, who is female, by the way. And that's what Africa knows. Whether you are in Nigeria, the Akani, you are the Dogon in Mali, you all know this is Mother Earth. And we respect mothers. You see, people have been made to believe science is not culture. It can't be anything else. It is culture. Because science is not, man, is not natural. But when you see an African commanding rain, we think it's evil. Yes. That is what the African has believed. Last week, I was at Njelele. 
the hill that you see there, that's yeah. our fertility shrine. It's, this is where last week we were recording uh, the goings on there, mm. because there's an African lady in the United States who wants to show uh, her fellow students and lecturers that in Africa we have ways of inducing rain. The problem comes when people think everything African has to rely on medicine, for example. No, for us it's symbolism, symbolic manipulation. It's critically important for us to, to understand uh, here is a certain condition. Hmm. You reproduce that condition elsewhere. You symbolically manipulate. You are Africans. There was a time when I was, uh, he was reminding me, uh, and I will still do it, to understand what I term African, ancient African uh, science. This is where witchcraft belongs. I thought I was going to research witchcraft. Then I realized, no, no, I'm not right. What the witches are making use of is a very ancient science, which has been denigrated. We are told, and you read on internet, they, a, a, a witch has been grounded because there were some anti-ballistic missiles that were meant to bring down this witch. But to, for me, I did, unfortunately, have a science background. Hmm. I know this book will not lift itself without yeah. energy. Yeah. It will never happen. But here are witches flying a number of them on a winnowing basket, yeah. no, not a broom like whites do. <laughs> For us, it's a winnowing basket in this part of the world. Then I say, why don't our universities investigate that energy? <laughs> they are busy condemning its witchcraft. Then I said, OK, you remove the witch and remain with the craft <laughs> to study it. Don't tell us about witchcraft. <laughs> Deal with the craft on its own, the science. Where is that energy coming from? We need energy. <laughs> this is why a Boko Haram being sponsored by people there too. It's because of critical resources that I have. If you look at all areas of conflict in Africa, I always say, look under the feet. What's there? That's the answer. Under the feet, there is oil. If certainly our cars were not to use oil, the politics would change dramatically. You won't even have the Boko Haram and some other uh, funny group there who are sponsored by the very people who condemn them. Money has bought their, uh, their, their, their port with money. But the important thing is conflict is induced by people who wanted resources, enslaved the African for over 400 years. They still want those resources. They will give you other reasons but it will be tantamount to getting the same resources that they've all. Politics is driven by resources because they are not infinite. Resources are finite. And Africa has too many of them. And Africa will have too many problems. When Africa says uh, we have discovered oil in Zimbabwe, for me it's not something to, to be happy about. No, it means there will be conflict now because they will want that oil. That doesn't mean that the abundance of resources that we have in Africa is also a curse to Africans? Correct. That's what is happening. It is. But Africa needs to make you... Uh, what, what, you see, we have gifts. Hmm. I believe the white man is very mechanical, he's concrete, he's physical, he's material. In that regard, it's difficult to beat him. But what has happened our gift hmm. has been de demonized. Our gift is spirituality. You can hit a fellow now who is in Britain. And we have always been wireless. They are discovering this wireless recently. It's something new in the Western world. But we have always been doing it through incantation, through the spoken word, through, through verse. We send a spell. And that spell is wireless. So that is the ancient African science that I want to do before I join my ancestors. That to me is very important. How are we able to do that? I, w I want to know your definition for Africa.
Africa is the cradle of humanity. Africa is the one that has interpretations to all the monuments that are in the world. That I discovered when someone in Britain, who I don't know, I found a book written uh, from the author with uh, something, something to Patisanyati, but I didn't know that author. Then I started reading. Then I saw the African mind. So to me, the ancients shared a common worldview. That I do not doubt. Whether I, I've started the Incas, I've started the Aztec, I've started the Mayas, I've started the Tokon, then I went to that place in Britain. I saw the African mind. I saw secularity. I saw the meaning of stone, which some of us place on their graves because we believe in the duality of being. That when I look at you, I see the physical body, the material body, but beyond that, there is a spirit which is everlasting and is represented by stone. So stone therefore represents eternity through its solidity, its resistance to weathering. You see, that's, that, that's African knowledge. I didn't read these things from someone's book. No, I observe, I've always said, nature is the best teacher in this world. You only need to observe nature objectively. It will teach you more than anybody else in this world. With whatever you're saying, which means an African has lost it. Mm. But when did an African lose all this? Uh, the African lost it when he got into contact with other people. He didn't lose it when he was alone. When did he get into contact with other people? For the African, it was a terrible uh, contact, a terrible situation, which began to change his worldview. Initially, remember, it was the Europeans who were coming to Africa, it was the Arabs coming to Africa, the Arabs, the Moors, were enslaving the people. Once you have a people enslaving you, they are teaching you something, that probably your ways are inferior. And this will be my argument again, when perhaps, but before I get to that, after enslaving activities of the Arabs from the East Coast, then taking the black man as his worker to Arabia. That was the beginning, you question yourself. Now I'm working for them. Africa was losing that sense of independence. Independence, not political independence. Yes, political independence, but economic independence is critically important. Political independence in isolation means nothing. You can have your independence, but you will have your poverty doubled, tripled, quadrupled. This is what is happening. What you need, what, when I look at my own background, within our own household, we were independent, hardly produce, looking for items from other people. We were growing our crops. We knew how to uh, get meal out of our sorghum grain. So we were, and then we were providing the labor as young children. But now I looked at my children, I, I do remember making a comment. My children are parasites and protected by some stupid law. If I say, let's go and plow, they say child abuse. That, that's, that, that's how they defeat you, child abuse. But we were working, one, we were economically productive, we were hurting our father's cattle, we were plowing, we were driving the scotch cart, transporting things, it was us doing it. So we're making some economic contribution as children. But now they tell us, mm -mm, that's child abuse. And what is important is, some of these fellows were not coming deep into the land or inland. Africans have always, we have always had Africans who become accomplices mm. to any project evil. We still have them in abundance today. 
It's very clear. They are very smart, but they are working with the people who undermine us. People who want to ensure we remain slaves at all times. And we have such people who are political leaders. This is why I said, the day Africa shall be transformed, the war, the campaign, the crusade will be led by spiritual people. Because it will be ancestors. And I can do, I can tell you now, the 400 years that in Christianity they talk about the, the children of Israel in Africa, we are at that period. I'm telling you about the Portuguese. From the time of the Portuguese to today, it's 400 years. And Africa is on the verge of reclaiming her lost glory. When Africa will once again embrace a new consciousness. An Africa that is not ashamed of their spirituality, that their ways were packing, their ways that are demonic. Our ways are our ways and we should be proud of them. What is unfair is you are being told about other people's standards. In political terms, in economic terms, it's them dictating. But Africa just whimpers like some little dog in the cold. It's terrible. That's what we need to change. Africans who are not ashamed, Africans who can say, yes, we are Africans, we are not, we don't regard anybody else. As a reference point, our humanity doesn't need to be authenticated by other people. Look at what was happening and people were losing that pride. And they were being shipped like sardines. In West Africa, we still have, it's a pit, I haven't been to West Africa, to see, even on the Zambezi River, I'm told there were structures where Africans were being collected shipped out there to work. Then later on, they realized, hey, this is an economic, carrying the African from the continent thousands of miles to get to the Caribbean islands, to get to the uh, Brazil, to the United States of America. No, let's establish our factories on the continent itself, where labor is, so they come. But how do you do that? Through colonization. So colonization means now you have the source of labor, the African is there, the factory is there, but what is produced has no beneficiation at all. Now, you, what you have is a ready market. You change the African in terms of his taste. Yeah. He prefers uh, cereals that have come from Brazil maize, which is not adapted to the African continent. So we had that self-sufficiency, which we lost. With our unpredictable weather, maize doesn't do that well. But our people love everything white. Do you think Africa got friends? Africa got convenient friends. They were friends for convenience. Is it friends with benefit or friends? In normal circumstances, where there is genuine friendship, there must be mutual benefit. If you are my friend, there's something that you benefit from me. Exactly. Similarly, I benefit something from you. you. Exactly. That is what it ought to be. But our friends today, and they are, they, they, they are coming, they are interested in the resources. It's not friendship per se, it's what they get. And it looks better in that it doesn't come as naked colonialism, but it's still a colonial relationship in that they are getting our raw materials, no beneficiation on the African continent itself. They go there, when they come back to us, higher prices because there's been beneficiation outside of Africa. Africa is the market. So we are the market and the, the items, the goods, from the resources on the African continent, the manufacturing process, beneficiation process, and uh, w went on elsewhere. And then they come to us, oh, they are good consumers. And to get good consumers, you need to work on the African mind, to begin to prefer things exotic. 
If you look at Zimbabwe, we are more than happy to receive items that are coming from South Africa, for example, from Europe and elsewhere. Their own things are despised. That's working on demand. That is creating a market. That's good for the fellow who has manufactured and are getting foreign currency by developing the mind of an African to despise what is yes. African, what is Zimbabwean, in preference for things that are foreign exotic. Since we don't have mental liberation, does it mean Africa is not liberated? It's not. No, 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 no. Did you think it is? Africa is independence. Independence was a golden opportunity to then seek liberation. Where we would have sat down and said, what did colonialism do to us? What damage did it bring about? Serious meeting, but as I always say, we were too, too happy to get into the shoes of the colonizer. That's, that's what we did. That's not liberation. Liberation is mental. What we did was something physical, something external, driving the white man out of our neighborhood, but remaining with him in your mind. It's controlling. The mind now, I think if you read my biography, I, I can't remember exactly what I called it. In other words, the people who are driving that are the Africans themselves. So they, they, they planted something in us. And now, without them, we continue to do as if they are around. So what is being planted is growing. Is growing, self-perpetuation. European nations took thousands of years to get to where they are now. At their own pace, with no one dictating the direction and pace, they got rid of their kings. Then they became titular. But our king was forcibly removed. When we still loved the king, they should have allowed us to enjoy our kingship, beat our drums. We were going to, like them, get tired at some point. Then we are serious. Because if you, what they did means, the king is not there. When I become the president of an African country, I want to behave like a king. Yes, because they drove the king. What history have I got other than knowledge of a, 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 a monarch? That's what I know. That's our heritage. So I become like one. And the emphasis is on ruling instead of leading. That's why I said, I don't want rulers. I prefer leaders. Do we have leaders in Africa? There are very few, if any. There are rulers. Ugubusa, kutonga, in, a, in the, some of our languages in Zimbabwe. Let us define our democracy. What is your definition for democracy? I, do, I, I will argue that democracy is doing what we understand, what we like, what we have legitimated as a people. That, that, that to me is democratic. But it may sound very undemocratic to other people. Democracy is never universal. It is a term of convenience, very convenient. When they want regime change, they will talk about democracy. But look, we know people who are despots, uh, we DRC, mm. for example, mm. but they loved him. So an African leader is not hated by Westerners because he's undemocratic. Forget it, it's not like that. It is because he's not opening his country to exploitation. That, that's all, that's what they are saying. When you are democratic, allow us to loot the resources from you. You are very democratic when you're like, that's <laughs> democracy. Africa does not need to be taught by these people. Yep. For example, when it comes to conservation of resources, mm. we were the people, and this was spiritually dictated to us, and we found ourselves willingly conserving nature because we said that tree is life. Now, look at the language. The language will teach you a lot. Uh, one day, I was getting home, 
and I didn't have a car, my usual car. Then my nephew says, Kulu, Kulu means uh, grandfather in our language. Who killed your car? Do you see? I said, yeah, this is important. I think he was about five years old then. So one is that a car, just like glass, has a life. In English, to say a glass has died does not make sense. Mm. But in African languages, I want to believe <laughs> it's the same with your language. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, the glass has died. When a language is lost, what is being lost is our way of life, our philosophy, our cosmology, our ideology, all that is being lost. And therefore losing our culture, we are losing a lot. As a result, we cannot defend every, anything African because we do not understand it. When I started writing, moving into the arts, I started with cultural practices. Years later, I discovered I was missing it. Then I made a shift. Now I was concentrating on that which underpins the practice. Then you begin to appreciate African culture in a better way. Instead of, when, when I look at a dance, I see important um, relationships. I see stars, the movement of cosmic bodies. When an African dances, the wriggling, I think I was looking at some West African women. This is true of all women in Africa. The waist, they even tie some clothes around so that they exaggerate the movement. But what's special there? That's creation, procreation. This is where it happens within the womb of mother. This is the interpretation of the chevron design. It's a female uh, icon, it's a woman. Okay. We have spoken. We will finish tomorrow. Thank you.